Junkanoo. Pretty thick clear water. White sandy beaches. You guessed it. We're, We're going, going to, to the Bahamas. Bahamas. Guys, welcome on board. Okay. How's everybody been doing? Uh, good? Good, glad to hear. So today I have a really special treat for you guys. We're flying down from Miami to Great Exuma on the Exuma chain in the Bahamas. So this is our route today. We just took off out of Miami and we're off to the coast of Florida. We just passed Bimini. The next island we're coming up on is Andros Island. And after that, we're going to pass off uh, Nassau here on the left, and then we're going to give you guys a real good view. We'll go right down the uh, Exuma chain there. We'll start at Norman's Key, and I'll show you guys all the different points of interest and all the different islands for you guys. So it should be a beautiful flight. It's a real nice day to fly out here. Flying in the Bahamas to me is very special. I've been doing it most of my career. The beauty of the Bahamas just never gets old. I get a lot of emails from different viewers asking me if they should become a pilot. My answer is always the same. If aviation is your passion and you enjoy flying airplanes around, I would say you definitely should go for it. With any type of career, you're going to be having to do a lot of sacrifices, and aviation is no different. You're going to get in debt. You're going to... Yeah, your first couple jobs are going to be low pay, and might not be exactly the lifestyle you want, but you have to pay your dues, and once you do, you'll eventually get into better jobs, and you'll have a career that you really enjoy. As far as age range, you can uh, get other jobs besides flying airlines that don't have age restrictions of when you got to retire. I started flying when I was around 29 years old. So I started flying later in life, and if you think about it, you only live life once. You never want to get to the end of it and not be happy and have the question of what if. If you've gone up and flown airplanes and you really enjoy it and you think that's something you'd like to make out of a career, I would say definitely pursue it. So right now we're up here at uh, 23,000 feet. we got an indicated airspeed over here of about 198. Uh, even our, our engine trend monitoring here is showing us the indicated airspeed at 196, and we've got a true airspeed at 288, and we've got a Mach number of 0.45 here at 23,000 feet. Over here off our left wing, you're going to see over here you know, uh, Chubb Key. There's Chubb Key right over there. If you guys have watched my videos, you'll have seen I've done flights in and out of that island. That's right over there. That's on the Barry Islands. Miami, November 851 Tango Bravo. Tango Bravo, go ahead. I would like to start uh, descent down for 851 Tango Bravo. November 851 Tango Bravo, descent and maintain for level 190. Down to 190, 1 Tango Bravo. We'd like to go down past 180 and just cancel to VFR. November 1 Tango Bravo, roger. Descent and maintain 17,000. That's all similar to 3008. 3008 down to 17,000, 851 Tango Bravo. Alright, so what I asked for was a descent down out of the flight levels so we could cancel our IFR flight and then continue on down VFR which we're going to cancel all our followings and go on our own once we get down low enough. And Miami November 851 Tango Bravo we'd like to cancel the IFR. November 851 Tango Bravo IFR cancel to receive you would like to remain for flight following? Yeah we're going to start a VFR descent and uh, we'll cancel the VFR flight following when you lose us. Air 851 Tango Bravo Roger, and um, will you be descending past the uh, 12000? Affirmative, we're going to go down to, right down to 1500 feet to enjoy the islands. Air 851 Tango Bravo Roger. Exit. All right, so we passed Chubb Key over exit here on the left, and the Tango next Bravo. island you're going to see is Nassau. You can see the International Airport right there, and Atlantis is actually out there under the cloud cover, but that's uh, Nassau. Option 710-330-7240. MIME, November 851, Tango Bravo, we'll cancel the VFR flight following. November 851, Tango Bravo, Roger. Radar service 78, clock VFR, frequency change approved. Good day. Roger, thanks for your help. Enjoy your day. 851, Tango Bravo. Likewise. Alright, so we are now going to squawk 1200 and we're going to go over to Unicom frequency. Continue into Great Exuma VFR. Receive, are you there? Hey, it's Nick. 
Hey Nick, how are you doing? Hey, good Steve, where you at? Uh, today we're flying the TBM 850, uh, just uh, west of Norman's Key. I'm going to be dropping in and uh, going down the Exuma chain to show all the viewers uh, the beauty of the islands. Oh good, yeah, the Exumas are the best. I love flying in the Bahamas. Uh, I got a lot of history out here, as you do too. So Nick, what would sum up your experience of how you feel about flying in the Bahamas? Uh, a lot of overwater flying. Uh, definitely uh, some of the most beautiful waters in the world. Uh, and, uh, good looking scenery, that's for sure. I agree. A lot of people think it's, you know, they, they question flying over water in a single engine airplane. What's your opinion on that? Well, um, it's, uh, it's a touchy subject, I guess, but uh, I mean, I know we operate uh, turbine power airplanes, they're very reliable, and uh, uh, operating in a part uh, 135, we definitely abide by uh, the uh, glide distance to land uh, rules at all times. Exactly. That's true. Flying a turbine powered airplane, when you burn jet fuel, it's a lot more reliable than flying a piston. Certainly. It's bulletproof. Well, Nick, it was nice hearing from you. Enjoy the rest of your day. You're going into Staniel Key? Yep, I'm uh, 30 minutes out. Nice, it's a beautiful day out here. We'll uh, catch you later. All right, Steve, have a good trip. Enjoy, Kuma. Thank you. Yeah, that was uh, Nick, my friend Nick. He's uh, flying the caravan into Staniel Key right now. The one limitation with the TBM that I really don't like is your inertial separator right here. What the inertial separator does is when you turn it on, it basically has a scoop inside that redirects a lot of the airflow, you basically would turn it on and it, in heavy precip or when you come down lower, so if you ingest anything, it'll kick it out instead of uh, sucking it all up into your engine. But the limitation with it is, see we're in the descent right now, we're going about 240 knots. You have to slow the airplane up under 200 knots to turn it on. So we got the power, we're pulling it back here and we're pulling the power back to get the airplane slowed up under 200 knots to uh, turn on the inertial separator. So this island up here, now we're entering the Exuma chain. This first uh, little area I'm going to show you is the is Norman's Key. Norman's Key back in the 1980s was a haven for drug runners. So as you can see, Norman's Key has been all redone. They did a whole new runway. They really made it a lot nicer. Any traffic in the vicinity of Dadman's Key? As you guys can see, you got a lot of sandbars out right now. What's nice about the timing of this flight is it's low tide. So as you can see, look at the, all the beautiful sandbars and all the different colors of the water. This is, section right here is actually one of my favorites coming down the chain here, just south of Normans. So guys, what you're going to see off your left wing right now is the Exuma National Park headquarters. You're going to see all the different sailboats anchored out in the channel there. It's a pretty cool sight to see right here. Daniel, catch up, big beach, bearing short, fine, or only one six, Daniel. Oh, look at them all. So right there, that's the park headquarters. So this next island you're going to see is Tyler Perry's island. The next island I'm going to show you here is going to be one of the most popular islands that you're going to want to see. It's Johnny Depp's island, the actor. What's cool is when he's here, he'll actually have a big black and white pirate flag up on top of his hill. I see that quite often. Uh, it doesn't look like he's there today, but I'm going to show you where it's at right here. It's going to be off the left side. So right here, guys. Starting right here, this is all Johnny Depp's island. That's his main beach right there that he uh, usually is on. And uses, and he also got married here to Amber Heard. Right over here is where the uh, wedding was on the Sand Beach. Okay, pitch Baron, clarity active. All right, guys, if you guys got a few dollars to spend, this little mansion here on the top of Over Yonder Key is about five hundred thousand a week to rent that house. Real beautiful island there. That's All right, guys, and this is Staniel Key. Right down here is the Yacht Club. That's where I always fly the caravan into. That right there is by far my favorite spot in all the Bahamas. Uh, 
Uh, this beach right here past Daniel Key, this is where they have really big iguanas. It's an iguana beach right there. You can go over and see these really big iguanas right over there on that beach. So right here, guys, this is Cave Key. It's a private airstrip. And I've been in there before because I'm going to show you really what's right really past Cave Key. Is this island right here, a very famous three. island called Musha Key. This is David Copperfield's private island. I used to fly David Copperfield in and out of there many times. And I've stayed overnight actually a few times on it. It's a beautiful island. And over here is Rudder Cut. I also have an old video where I've landed. I have a video here at Rudder Cut where I've landed a caravan there, packed coral strip. Yeah, that was pretty exciting. That's rudder cut. So guys, we're about eight minutes out from Great Exuma. It was a going to ragged, but I can't It's been fun showing you guys the different yeah. islands here on the Exuma chain. As there you can see, there's more. no difficult yeah, approach procedures you know, here or anything. You basically yeah. just duck and weave and okay. enjoy the beautiful scenery of the islands. All right, guys, so Exuma International here is not a controlled tower, but they have a person that sits around and gives you advisory. So we'll just announce our position here. Exuma, you got a TBM. We are 18 miles to the northwest inbound. Exuma. Aircraft calling Exuma, reporting 18 miles, taking the call sign on the aircraft act. That's a TBM. We're at November 851 Tango Bravo. We're 17 to the northwest inbound from Opelaka. TBM 850. 851 Tango Bravo, good afternoon. Expect runway 1 2 at Great Exuma, advise 5 miles. Surface winds 110 at uh, 10 knots, 3001 on the station pressure. Roger, thanks for the heads up, and we'll report 5 miles out for 851 Tango Bravo. Tango Bravo traffic estimated 6 miles, 7 miles northwest of Exuma on the east shoreline north bound of PA 32. I will keep an eye out for him, 851 Tango Bravo, thank you. All right. So that's the. Uh, he, gives you, he gives you advisories. Right. Roger. Okay, it sounds like the other guy's at 2,500 feet, and we're at 1,500 feet, so we should be no factor. And we actually, I see him on our TCAS now, so we will be able to keep a good eye out for him. All right, guys, we're about five miles out, so I'm going to report our position, and I'm going to show you where we'll be staying for the next three nights. And November 851 Tango Bravo, we're five miles out to the northwest, inbound for the airport. Runway is clear, wind check on 110 at 109. So he gave us a little heads up. So here's where we're going to be staying for the next three nights. Right down here at Sandals, Emerald Bay. Probably going to play a round of golf. Should be a fun time. Looks pretty nice. All right, so we're on a left base here. Three-mile left base for only one, two. Start turning our final here. We're gonna pitch for uh, 110 knots. Right now we're still doing 140 knots, actually 150. So we still got to slow it up quite a bit here. We got a nice long runway here. It's probably about between Freeport and then you got NASA. This is probably one of the longer runways of the Bahamas. Got a lot of runway to be able to use. Sometimes you'll see people taxiing out from the ramp. They'll take off on the other end of the runway without even backtracking at all, like airplanes that can utilize shorter runways. We're going to be using Odyssey Aviation here. I see our shadow off there to the left. Okay, we're going to go back to Flight Idle here. Now we'll go back into beta, and our ramp's going to be on the left here. Welcome to the Exumas, guys. The other day when I was here, I met Judge Judy. <laughs> you never know who you're going to meet when you're out here flying around. Judge Judy was really nice. I asked if she was going to fly back with me, and she's like, I couldn't do that. My pilot would probably get upset, but it was really kind of cool to meet her.
Odyssey Aviation is going to be over here on the left. I see our marshaller coming out there to park us, so we'll follow him in. All right, there's our marshaller right there in front of us, so we're going to go down here and do a U-turn, and we'll shut her down. Guys, it was fun having you on board. Hope you guys enjoyed all the scenery I was able to show you guys. If you're looking to become a pilot, I hope that's a little motivation right there to show you the types of things you get to fly around, and you might meet Judge Judy. All right, guys, we'll talk to you again someday soon. Have a good one. All right, here we are. Time to go have some fun. Yeah. Steve-O, Kathy, welcome to the Bahamas. Da 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 da